Hi, and welcome to the ATS podcast with me, Will Brown, and John Soulsby, where we break down chunks of health and fitness information into bite-sized pieces, remove a bunch of the noise, and just leave what's relevant. Uh, today we are on episode number nine of the podcast. Uh, our topic for today is how to start working out or training. Uh, and the off topic that we're going to start with before we get on to our main topic is our kind of origin story. How did ATS Athlete Training Systems as a company occur? Yeah. So, I mean, like all the best companies, Microsoft, Amazon, you, you know, these big boys in the in the industry, we started in a garage. <laughs> yeah, that's the, so, the classic blueprint. Us. Amazon. Yeah, that, if, that'll be us in ten years' time. If you're looking for a company, find it in your garage. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I suppose we we started because we got kicked out of the gym we trained in together. Yeah, even or then, I think asked asked to leave. I think, or it was made obvious that. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't. A good it, we weren't in the right part of Edinburgh for it to be a polite request note. Uh, yeah. But we did get kicked out. Um. um. <laughs> And I think part of it as well, I remember we, so we traded for those, we trained in Edinburgh Leisure and I think Edinburgh Leisure gyms now are quite good, but back then, like we used to squat out of effectively a comp bench, but it only had like three rungs for where to put the bar. So like we'd have to sit on the bench and get under the bar and then stand up with it, walk all the way back. So the bench wasn't underneath you anymore, and then squat, and then try and re-rack it into that. Like, it was village. Yeah, it was. It was pretty village. I think. I think the entire free weight section consisted of dumbbells up to thirty kilos, a dip and chin stand, and yeah. that bench. Like yeah. the 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 ones if you've if you've trained in like a pure gym or a JT gyms or a gym group or whatever, and they have those benches that have like three heights and they're all about six inches apart, so they're never correct. Yeah. It's and the bench is just kind of stuck in place, like in between the two uprights. Yeah. That's that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So yeah, we that's where we squatted. So, so yeah, yeah, we're trying to was, squat out of that. <laughs> it was the the setup was kind of village. Um and but back then in Edinburgh Leisure, I actually don't know what the, the price was like now, but essentially we had to pay to get gym access. You essentially had to pay their top membership. So you like we. We're technically members of like the golf clubs and the swimming pools and everything else in Malaysia had just to train at this one gym. Yeah, the uh, um, as far as I know, the same gym um, has mad kit right now. They have like platforms, yeah. racks, it's, uh, everything, which is well, bizarre. Like, it's cheap <laughs> in, in comparison to a swimming pool. That yeah, it's true. Gym, gym kit's quite cheap, yeah. but I think we did the. I remember doing the math, and we like even back then, like we were paying like forty quid a month to join this to be in this gym oh, shit, so like for the two of us that's like a grand a year so we're like right a grand how much gym kit can we buy yeah because that was our original kind of big brain idea was if we just yeah. bought kit and used it in the garage we we're like well if we use it for a year we'll have saved money yeah because i think that Obviously. was even <laughs> skint people i think that was yeah. the uh the idea we also like the yeah, idea yeah. of using chalk because it's really quite difficult to deadlift without chalk. Especially on like Edinburgh Leisure Bars back then. Yeah, like, you, like very cheap barbells don't really have the best kind of knurling, that spiky stuff that hurts your hands. Yeah. Uh, so holding onto them with unchalked hands is quite difficult. It's sad, boys. Um, um, but yeah, we did that. So we bought... We bought the grey rack, we got a bar, a bench, a bunch of plates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the first bit of fitness kit I ever actually bought before that was a 24 kilo kettlebell that we still have. Yeah. I remember, it getting, still have it. I remember yeah. it getting delivered to my old office job because my head of operations tried to accept the delivery and went to pull it inside the threshold of the office and just about put his back out. Because <laughs> it, it was just a cardboard cube with those like yeah. really harsh plastic tie things in like kind yeah. of parcel arrangement. And he just went to lift it, assuming it was probably like a new like box. A normal of, parcel. Yeah, like yeah. a normal parcel, box of Xerox paper or something. I just went like <laughs> as he as he dead cold ran into the twenty four kilos of kettlebell that was inside the cardboard. Yeah, I remember that because I was doing 
that was when I tried to do I did the ten thousand kettlebell swings workout for the first time. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that program maybe four times in my life, and it is never not gross. Yeah, it's not, it's not Megan. It is um, horrible, and only on like maybe the second time through did I even think to put tape on the kettlebell handle, so that oh my god, it, that's a game changer. It, doesn't yeah it doesn't just wreck your hands so the, the, for this isn't relevant to the off topic but it's essentially <laughs> you, you do about ten thousand kettlebell swings in a month you work it out so i think off the top of my head it's like you do a set of is it like 10 15 25 50 or is it 5 10 15 25 and then you do that five or six times you essentially do that enough to make a, like 250 i think you get per workout and you do the workout right. four times a week yep. so you do a th yeah and you do a thousand something like that i can't remember anyway sure. it's a lot it's a lot of kettlebell swings it's yeah. it literally all you need to be able to do it is a a single kettlebell of relative weight uh and that is it. And you I mean, can start. That's, you can... that's almost an answer to our actual topic, but like it would be a gross way to start working out. Um, it would be a really gross way to start working out. However, if you fancy something that is just super simple, but very challenging, that'll do it. Like if if it was, yeah. I considered doing it over lockdown again, just cause again it was nothing better to do. Also, super easy. Like mm. use your kettlebell. Yeah, you, uh -huh. ju you just need a single kettlebell. There's like ways to chuck calisthenics in between stuff. You can do, you can, it's super versatile. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, to finish off the origin story before we move on, I think the, then like having the gym kit, I don't think we ever managed in the first few years to do the whole like, oh, it'll be cheaper afterwards because we just be kept buying more gym kit. That's yeah. the issue. If you do this, don't just buy more gym kit every year because. We ended up just still spending the money every year. But I think then, like, friends from school, and then you started with the Wolves, and the Wolves boys started, like, essentially grew from people just started coming down to train. We enjoyed having people to train and kind of, like, coaching them, and it just kind of grew from there. Yeah, there was definitely a point where I spent more time at my old office job looking up programs coaching stuff like training information than i did actually doing my job <clears throat> and, and same for me for engineering there was more i was doing more of that than i was actually going to lectures and everything else. yeah so there, there was a definite point at some some type point in time where uh, both of us were just like fuck it do we want to like do we want to do this for yep. a job let's go <clears throat> yeah and i think both of us were like well we're young enough so if we screw it up Right. Yeah, realistically, uh, we can we can we can sort stuff. Like, if there's any time to take risks, it's when you have bugger all responsibility. Like, nobody's yeah. got kids. Nobody's got. Well, we do now. Like, people have a mortgage now. But like back in the day, when you're when you're like twenty, you don't have that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if it all goes uh, south, it's fine. Uh, it seems to have worked out so far. Touch wood. Touch Doing wood. Good. Just making it up as we go along. Um. Oh yeah. Official, the official topic is how to start working out. Um, 10,000 kettlebell swing workouts. <laughs> see, like, we joke, but I genuinely think that because there's so much, I mean, the reason we're doing this podcast is there's so much info, but I actually think uh -huh. being an idiot was kind of is helpful. He? Yeah. Yeah. Because you didn't know any better. You were just like, no. I mean, 10,000 kettlebell swing sounds pretty simple. Like, just swing what, a kettlebell. What does Dave, t what does Dave t <clears throat> teach you to do? I'll do that. Weirdly enough, I've actually heard him talk about this exact same thing of the the idea that people will outsource, like fully outsource their training and take absolutely mm -hmm. no part in it. Mm -hmm. And they don't actually learn. I know we specifically are attempting to like make ourselves irrelevant. Like we want people yeah. to kind of learn as they go so that they feel more confident, like part of self determination theory is like um yeah. independence, like actualization and stuff. Um but yeah, like back in the day, you would just kind of like do shit and figure it out as you kind of, as you kind of went along. Like not to be yeah. kids these days, but 
No. It is kind of interesting. Um, what I feel now in the fitness industry has kind of got, it's just a lot more professional in the way that like it is perfectly acceptable for someone to be like, I don't have any clue what I'm doing. I will outsource this and pay someone else to do it. Whereas mm. I feel kind of back then, that was like quite rare. Like 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago. Yeah, I, don't, I definitely didn't know as many people who yeah. did that. The um, Like I knew there were sport coaches. I was kind of on the, I was, uh, what's the word? Like borderline aware that strength and conditioning coaches were a thing. But like yeah. only on like only at sport teams you would see on TV, like yeah. I, assu- uh, I maybe assumed there was about ten jobs in the country <laughs> like yeah. for strength and conditioning. And I feel jobs. as well like so we were at an Edinburgh Leisure. They had a couple of like um, gym instructors there, but I don't know if they were like they had like a PT there that kind of cared about strength training. No, you'd see people do the rounds on like the machines. Yeah. And like, Whereas, like coach classes and stuff. Yeah. Whereas now, like, I can't imagine there not being a PT that cares about strength training in almost any gym up and down the country. Oh yeah, like I wouldn't be so like I would be surprised more than not surprised if you couldn't find a meathead in any gym. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, it was very much the exception and not the rule. Um. But how how to start working out? Uh. Just start. Like, find something that you would probably enjoy or you think you would enjoy because you might not know until you try it um and give it a shot yeah i say for specifically talking start working out in the terms of like a a gym environment rather mm-hmm. than just like an exercise i'd say we're obviously probably pretty biased in this one but i would say is find a like small private facility I'm going to say like ours, but it doesn't have to be our one. But essentially, like, where there's a small community of people, because what you'll find is they might seem a lot more intimidating on the outside. Like, you'll look at them and be like, oh, these, everyone knows what they're doing. It's, like, super intimidating. But actually, when it's a small group of people that all, like, know each other quite well, and it's a really good community where I'd say, by and large, everyone wants everyone else to succeed mm. and is just really interested in getting to know people and... <laughs> Kind of just hanging out at the gym whereas if you go to like your pure gyms and stuff which you might find are a bit less intimidating we've had a lot of people say actually it's just kind of this corporate world where no one really gives a shit what you're doing uh, yeah like the i remember we actually had a we had someone who signed up as a client who uh for the first i don't know like year only came to the gym for uh, board game nights on a Friday. Yeah, like pre-lockdown, we would play board games most Friday evenings. Just after, like, some folk would come in and work out, and then we'd play board games. Like, it was just more a kind of social thing. And we're big nerds, so we like board games. Yeah. Uh, and this person who was a, a kind of friend of a friend just came for the board games for like a year straight. And eventually, least, it was just yeah. like, I'm going to start working out. And we were like, Oh, dope! That's excellent. Yeah. But I think that's one of the benefits of small climbing gyms. Loads of places, like, it doesn't even have to be a gym gym. Like, there are climbing gyms, there's, like, running clubs, there's sport Or there's, teams. um, yeah, or there's, uh, oh, what's the name of it? The, like, aerial or hoop one. There's one in Edinburgh, what's it called? Oh, um, like, Primal Gym. The, yeah, or, like, Freedom of Flight. I yeah, think, Freedom of Flight Edinburgh. Aerial. Yeah, they're, like, places that like, do all kinds of funky stuff. Even just places like that? Yeah. They do a bunch and of... And, yeah, I'd say... If we're talking about just starting exercising, you're like, oh, I want to like be more active. We talk a lot about just being active is like phenomenally good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just find something you think might be interesting that is active, and find like a small group of people that do it, and off you go. Yeah, go for um, a walk. Yeah, or like one thing I know, for example, um, is more in my niche at the moment with cycling. It's like I think you'd be amazed if you wanted to start cycling but kind of had no clue. The amount of small bike shops that probably have like a community of people that go out and like a group ride together and you could join on one of the beginner ones yeah group ride stuff and, like so and that'll be the same through pretty much any sport you can name i think so like because again loads of sports are interested in having more participants like it's if you're worried about it think about it in this i kind of i try and think about it in this way like they 
will also benefit from having more people. So they're going to do and be as accommodating as possible to new people because that's how they yeah. get more people to play the sport with. Or in a cynical fashion, for a lot of them, it's how they make money. Yeah. By getting new people. In. Which yeah, whichever so lens you want to look they at. Love it having, so they love having new people in as well because. Yeah. Um, like if you if you think about it, people people whose people whose community or, or business isn't conducive to having people stick around are kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Like yeah. they, they, they are deliberately impacting their ability to make money. And and yeah, and that's where I find like going to smaller places is usually like a bit nicer because I'd say almost more often than not you're gonna be talking to someone who is an avid <clears throat> interest in what's going on. Like for us, for example, if you come down to train at the gym you will be dealing with one of the two people that own it and actually care about it whereas if you go to like oh i'm gonna bash on pure it's not actually bashing on pure gym but they're just a good example but if you go to a pure gym it's like it's just someone who's paid to be there or more likely they're not pays to be there and doesn't really care <laughs> yeah they are in they are in like, neo villainy <gasps> neo villainy yeah. servitude it's the 1800s <laughs> yeah like it, it's it's actually pretty rough. So it's feudal um, feudal France all over again. Yeah, <laughs> people pay for the land that they they attempt to till for profit. Yeah, if they can't pay, they get kicked out kicked out of their house. Um, it's wild. The yeah for so starting out, um, find something you like. In summary, find something you like the look of, or even if even better if you know you like it. Um, find a local group. Um, there's. Facebook groups, Reddits, Discords, all kinds of stuff. Um, if you're particularly like, find your city Reddit and see if anyone knows anything on there. That's always a down low, quite a good resource. Um, get involved in like a beginner or an intro day. Or if you hate people, uh, just find one of those apps that uh, lets you walk other people's dogs. Then you don't you barely have to interact with other people and you get to interact with dogs, yep. which is arguably way better. Yeah, and you get a whole bunch of steps in, bunch more activity, but uh, bit of resistance training if it's you know a bit bigger, likes to pull on the lead a bit, some yep. sled work in. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's probably like one of the best ways. Or attempt to live in blissful ignorance. Google absolutely nothing about working out, and just you know figure it out for yourself. Yeah, <laughs> Wor worked for us. So that's it kind of worked for us. <laughs> uh, for a while. For yeah, and. That is us for episode 9. Catch you later, folks. <laughs>